All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash, the of City Apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakia, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word and all truth in its sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shah is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashim is in the name. Rakah is spirit. Kodash is holy. Akiyam is brothers. Akwath is sisters. Shalawan means peace and Yashar Allah is Israel in ancient Paleo-Hebrew. This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. And it reads, Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All right. And I want to go into a lesson through the spirit on the family. All right. And when I say the family, I'm talking about the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians and Haitians. All right. And the dynamic that we've experienced as a family. All right. We've all went into captivity as a family. All right, we're still suffering the curses to this day as a family, you know, but as the scriptures say, only a remnant would return and actually understand the bigger picture. You know, and this lesson is really inspired by a trip, you know, that I've taken through the spirit to see some of my family roots, so to speak. You know, and the conclusion that I reach is that ultimately, you know, it's going to take the Lord's judgment for our nation to be healed as a whole. Because most of our people have not received correction. They don't look at the situation that we're in as correction. And they don't really understand our family dynamic outside of the aunties, uncles, cousins, fathers, brothers, sisters dynamic. They don't understand our dynamic as a nation of people. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now. And Jerusalem is a people before us a place. And know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Return. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. And when you think about that, right, every detail of our personal life is an example of the judgment of the Heavenly Father. The fact that we are in captivity. Another point is that the fact that you can feel this as a captivity is actually a blessing unto you. Because two thirds of our people in this condition, they don't even feel like this is a captivity. They don't feel like this is a form of correction. They feel like this is where we will always be and they are comfortable making this their rest. And that goes back to that family dynamic where you have two thirds of our people who are so consumed with getting ahead. That they don't sit back and actually look at the condition that we're in as a nation of people. Which reminds me. This is Haggai. Chapter 1. And I want to jump down to verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. And we all have experienced this. You know, when you get around your family and you see the condition that we're in as a people and how desperately our people want rest, that they're willing to settle for whatever is in front of them. You begin to realize through the spirit why the judgment of the Lord is ultimately going to cleanse us as a nation of people. Because when you go into Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, the Lord said he has stricken us, but we have not grieved as a nation of people. Only the remnant have returned and actually understood the bigger picture. 
And for the family's sake, the Lord is going to have to get rid of two thirds of our people. You know, when you first come into the truth, you understand that two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. And that zeal that you have and that fear of the Lord that you have causes you to go around your family and try to force them into something that's ultimately not for them for the most part. Because ultimately, it's going to take that judgment to cleanse us as a nation of people. This is why the Lord told Edris, understand for thyself and such as be like unto thee. Because ultimately, as bad as you want them to understand this, if it's not form, it's not form. And when you get around your family, when you get around your relatives, you begin to understand why the judgment of the Heavenly Father is so necessary. Because that's the only way that's going to break them out of this cycle. All right, I want to continue. Haggai 1 and 6, ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Because as much as our people try to fight against the curses, it just digs them in the deeper hole. All right, continuing at verse nine, it reads, you looked for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because mine house that is waste and you run every man unto his own house. Because the average Jake in this world is more concerned with their personal situation as opposed to the condition of us as a nation of people. And they're willing to make the best out of the worst situation, regardless of the circumstance. And what I mean by that is that we're in a worst case scenario and nothing you can do personally will dig us out of this hole as a nation of people, not even your own family. And we were put in this situation for discipline, not for comfort. But our people have not reached that conclusion for the most part. And that's why the scriptures say a remnant shall return. And that consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. And it makes me meditate on it because the Lord said that we are his witnesses. So whenever you're around your family, you're actually a witness unto why the Lord's judgments is necessary. Why the only way to peace and everlasting joy is through this path. You begin to understand that more and more as you see it personally. And once you understand it and you see it, you become more willing and accepting of the Heavenly Father's will. And then you begin to hasten the day because you understand that's the only path whereby they will be saved. Two thirds are going to have to learn this lesson through death by pain. Because this situation that we're in as a people was supposed to make us return to the Lord. Anybody with some sense. That's why the apostles, when they say we're only looking for the elect, it makes so much sense because, again, if that wisdom ain't in you already, you're not going to understand this. If that wisdom is not already imparted into you, you're not going to hear that message and say, you know what? I got to I got to change my ways. I got to move different. And if you don't do that, when you hear this call, it's because ultimately that spirit was not given unto you. Why? Because what does the scripture say? All right. There's Ecclesiasticus. Chapter one. And I'm going to jump down to 14 to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. And this message is supposed to awaken that fear. And if it doesn't, it's because that fear is not present. And what happens is you begin to understand that the will of the Lord has to play out regardless of how it looks in your own little personal situation. Maybe some of your family members get saved. Maybe some of them don't. But ultimately, for the well-being of the entire family, two-thirds have to be destroyed. And that's for the welfare, welfare of the entire family. And as we get closer and closer to the end, we begin to understand that more and more. And this picture reminds me of that. You know, when you look at all the people in this picture, in this uh, portrayal of Israel, you begin to understand that you know, Jay got this saying in the world, nobody's bigger than the program. And ultimately, two thirds of our people, they don't want to receive correction. They don't want to receive the promises. They don't they want to be here. 
They want to continue writing their own rules and deciding what they feel is righteous. Regardless of the circumstance that we're in as a nation of people. And that's why for the sake of the family, they got to go. This is Jeremiah chapter five. And I'm going to jump down. To verse four. You know what? Let's start at three. It says, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. And they would rather be under the yoke of Esau than the yoke of Yahweh Shai. And they don't gain anything from it. You know, and that's why ultimately through the spirit, when you look at you know, what the Lord says, you begin to understand more and more why it's necessary because you see that without it, we won't, we won't make it. Without the Lord's intervention, we're done. Without the Lord getting rid of two thirds of our people, we're done because they refuse to receive correction. They refuse to change. And the more you understand this, the more you become at peace with the will of the Heavenly Father, especially when you get close around it. Because for me, I'm not around my family as much. So when I come around, I see, you know, and I understand through the spirit why the Lord's will has to take place because I understand that they refuse to return. You know, at, at some point, at one point when you were around your family, you were the one that wanted to tell them and try to teach them. And then once you saw how much they mocked and how much they scoffed, you fell back. So now when you come around, they want to, Bring up certain conversations just to hear you talk, but it's not really about them actually returning to the Lord. And then you say you say a few things to them and then you realize that they hear the Lord's word, but they don't want to do. Them. And that's why ultimately, as the scriptures say, and let's get it. Ecclesiastes 30. And 17 reads, death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. And what you find out is that our people are, are ultimately sick. And it's not financial. It's not military. It's not uh, land. It's a sickness of disobedience. And being able to and having this rebellious spirit of believing that you can write your own version of righteousness and that the Lord will accept what you give him instead of doing what he told you to do. And this has been the controversy of our family as a nation of people since we got here. And when you look at our past captivities, you see that this is a reoccurring theme. And that's why ultimately this is the good news. Because while the remnant is saved and two thirds is put to death, ultimately it ends this cycle of being saved just to end up in the same place we were, which is back in captivity. And that's why when you sit back and look at it, the Lord said, you know, judge betwixt me and my vineyard. All right. What more could I have done to it? You know, you walk around your family, you walk around just Jake in general and you realize, like, what more could the Lord have done? And then it does what it makes you say, Khan, let it be whatever you got in store for him. Let it be because I I see it. You see it. And for the sake of the entire family, two thirds got to go. For the sake of the whole family, two, uh, two thirds of them, they got to go. Because their mindset is fully set in them to do wickedness and to live in the shadow of the heathens forever. All right, this is Isaiah 5 and 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? 
When you think about all them captivities, the Lord did that because he loved us to correct us. Just for us to be in 2023, having to learn the same lesson over and over. Then you begin to understand the importance of what the Lord has to do for the sake of the entire family. Isaiah 5 and 4 again reads, What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. You know, in Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the Lord said this. He presented this point. This is Ezekiel 18 and 25. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my ways equal. Are not your ways unequal? And you come to the conclusion that our people are completely unreasonable. That the Lord took all this effort to show us that we were wrong. Just for our people to continue doing the same bullshit. And it makes more sense why the Lord got to do what he got to do. Lord willing, we're not a part of that number. But you understand the necessity of the situation. And this picture reminds me of that because it reminds me of the greater good. And for the greater good, the Lord's going to get rid of two thirds of our people. They'll come back. But right now they are sick and death is better than a bitter life and continual sickness, as the scriptures say. And our people suffer both in this. They suffer both sides of that coin, not just a continual sickness, but a bitter life. Because whatever they have that they think is life is bitter compared to what they're supposed to get in the kingdom. And that's why ultimately to, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shah, the judgments of the Lord are, are going to have to rain down like water for the world to comprehend what the elect understand now. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, to the Akwath, who are believing this word, in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.